I'm not sure if you guys know the story. It was uh, in World War II and a lot of Allied aircraft were falling out of the sky and they were trying to work out the place where to armour the planes to best defend it from bullets. So what they did, they took a statistical approach and when the planes returned from battle, they actually identified exactly where the bullet holes were and they identified the areas where the, most of the damage was and they said, okay, that's where they get shot the most, let's armour the planes uh, in those areas. So show of hands, who thinks that's a sensible idea? So what you've done is you've identified the areas of the plane that can sustain damage and not have it fall out of the sky. <laughs> now, so what this shows is that alternative ways of thinking, different ways of thinking can sometimes lead to different conclusions. And vitamin D, I believe, is one of those. Because we look at it, especially from the sun, we think we go out into the sun, our body generates vitamin D, it must be a great thing. So who thinks that vitamin D from the sun is good? Okay, so your body produces vitamin D as a sunscreen because the sun, the UV rays, the UVB rays that allow the skin to generate vitamin D damage DNA. And the protective mechanism that your body has against that is to produce vitamin D. Phytoplankton 500 million years ago were producing vitamin D as a sunscreen. This is a preserved tray. So when you think about it like that, so our body actually uses vitamin D, it serves a good purpose, but the vitamin D from the sun isn't to make our bones strong, it's just to protect ourselves from skin cancers. In actual fact, Ansel Keys, the infamous Ansel Keys, he did the seven country study. One element of that study analyzed people's cholesterol level versus sun exposure. What happened? Those people who spent more time out in the sun had lower cholesterol levels. Why? Because vitamin D is made from cholesterol. Now this leads to something very interesting. I've just told you about phytosterols, plant sterols, how they're really not very good for you. That they can get absorbed into the body and they can interfere with the normal biochemical functioning of cholesterol. Perhaps vitamin D synthesis in the skin may be one of those functions. Anecdotal, but we have observed in many people that eliminating seed oils from the diet leads to a resistance to sunburn. I've heard dozens of people tell me this. It's all over the ketogenic forums on the internet. Maybe a show of hands, who here today has experienced that? A lot of you, I dare say at least half. The idea is that what happens if you're consuming seed oils and these sterols are interfering with your natural production of vitamin D, this protective level of vitamin D, then you're not going to be as resilient to sunburn. And then we also have a look at the data that says, but what about COVID? Because high vitamin D levels protect me from dying from COVID. Well, the association of high vitamin D levels does. That's true, because I would argue that high vitamin D is a surrogate marker for metabolic health. That is, on average, if you have a higher vitamin D level, you're in better metabolic health. We call vitamin D a fat-soluble vitamin. What does that actually mean? It's carried in fat stores. It's stored in fat stores. Excellent. So if you're obese, your fat reserves act as a sink, as a reservoir for your vitamin D. And this has been demonstrated in research that when they give people of different weights vitamin D supplements, the people who are leaner have more of that vitamin D enter their circulation. Vitamin D therefore is acting as a surrogate marker for good metabolic health. Now you do need some vitamin D for bone health. We've all heard of osteoporosis and osteomalacia and rickets and all of these conditions. Fine. But the threshold at which 
that starts to be a problem is far lower than the threshold which a lot of people in the ketogenic and low carb communities are actually striving for. And I'd also argue that the very notion that we need sun exposure to get adequate vitamin D levels, that's entirely misplaced. We've got population studies. When Wilhelmer Stefansson was up there with the Inuit, he did not identify one single case of vitamin D deficiency in a pigmented population with no sun. Why? Remember, it's a fat-soluble vitamin. Animal foods contain vitamin D. We only consider now that we can get vitamin D from the sun, but the truth is, pasture-raised cows, that fat also has vitamin D. Other foods containing natural animal saturated fat contains vitamin D. We shouldn't rely on that. It doesn't matter pigmentation of your skin, so on and so forth. You shouldn't need to rely on the sun to get your vitamin D. You should be able to get it from a healthy lifestyle. And that, I believe, is key to why the vitamin D supplementation trials are basically disappointing. Because if you have a high vitamin D level and it's from a bottle, then that means you've missed out on a healthy diet. That means that maybe you are overweight and your fat stores are sucking the vitamin D out of your blood. So it's just all about thinking differently. Thank you.